This is a scanner tutorial. First uh, step is to make sure that your scanner glass is clean. Best way to do that is with a soft cloth, cotton cloth. Here I'm using a um, an old uh, uh, undershirt uh, rag, and uh, you either dampen it with a little bit of water or a little bit of alcohol, and wipe the glass clean. If you notice that there is uh, some kind of smudge or something on the glass that's on the underside, behind the glass, inside the box, which happened to me one time, it's, you're out, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Next, what you do is uh, use a bellows or blower to get rid of uh, the loose particles of dust on the clean glass and also whatever dust there might be on the pad, uh, you know, the backing to the scanner. And then you place your photograph on the glass and square it up manually by hand. And I recommend that even if it takes a try or two of preview scanning in order to uh, rotate it, that you square it up by hand rather than allow the uh, software to do an auto rotate because then you don't not you no longer have a pristine scan what you have a scan is a scan with a transformation by the software and what you want is a straight out scan you want the original information you do not want a scan and then a transformation by the software because you're removing yourself one operation from the original data. All right, I've fired up the Epson scan software and we are in full automatic mode, which you don't want. And it does too much of your thinking for you. Several other modes. There's home mode, which has a few more controls, office mode, more controls, but the, you really want to use the professional mode. And here we go. We've got the control needed to get what we want out of this. So I recommend professional mode, and after this tutorial, you'll know how to use it. So yeah, professional mode It's the current setting. You can save different settings. I've never used this. I just, res I just set it for either scanning photos, scanning slides, scanning uh, documents, and I yeah, just reset it. OK, it's reflective. This is if you have, you know, positives or negatives. We want reflective. Document table, don't need to change that. Photo instead of document. And I'm going to choose 48-bit color. You have these different selections. 24-bit color, which most, with a lot of these all-in-one or office-type uh, scanners, uh, this is 24-bit. But 48-bit color is really for, for professional photography, uh, photographic-type work. We're going to use that. Could use 16-bit grayscale because it is black and white, but I'll tell you why. Uh, we're, we're just going to go with 48-bit color. Uh, the resolution, I'm going to switch. I'm going to pick 1200 DPI. Uh, because it's such a small photo, I still want to be able to do things with it. Uh, at a minimum with photography work, I go 600, DP, 600 DPI. Print is 300 DPI, printing out, but 600 DPI to give you some more um, information, more options, and for this particular photograph, 1200 DPI, which will allow me to blow it up and uh, to, to work with it, um, gives, give more information to work with it. So we're going to go down to preview, and we're doing preview scan, and there we have the first preview. Now I'm going to do a secondary preview scan by just dragging a rough box around it and then I'm going to use zoom and zoom in. This forces this tells the computer uh, the scanner to go one more scan but see now it's now I can see it easier what I'm doing. Now I take the box and I slide it up. Now by hand I've already squared up this drawing. It's not exactly square but it's pretty close and I'm using the base of the uh, of the uh, photo the base of this photo to 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 uh, to line it up, uh, the, it's, you can see that the, it looks like maybe scissors were used on it. It's kind of off off at odd angles, so I used the base, and now I'm going to go ahead and 
select the drawing that I actually want to work with. And up here, to get the height, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to like try to use a two or three thirds rule type of thing. Here's his eyes at two thirds, one third, I'll say this is the one third of the height, two thirds of the height, three thirds, I'll just pull this down so that the eyes more or less sit at, at the at like at the two third. There's a third here, another third here. Eh, that's about it. Ball, you eyeball it. So there's not any information up here, but I'm trying to go for better composition. And uh, if you put the, uh, points of interest on the third line, you know, on the on the one third lines, it 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 gives a better composition. So there we've got the uh, we've got it selected. Just tweak this in a little more. Selected. So now let's go over here. Uh, you can see here that there's been a change. What we have here is like an auto select, uh, you know, an auto correction. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to the see how faded this drawing is. All right, see how faded the image, the photographic image is. We're going to go ahead by hand to change that now. One thing I want to make sure you do is to n make sure unsharp mask, make sure that it is not checked. If you see it checked like this, uncheck it. Leave that thing blank. The reason being is unsharp mask is a filter which will modify the data. You want a pristine scan. You want you, you can always put the unsharp end mask in with a image editing program later on. But if you put the unsharp mask in now, you will always have it. You won't have the uh, information at before it's modified. Even though it's gonna, it might look soft, you can still sharpen it up later on. But if you sharpen it now, that's it. You've got what you know. It, it does other things to the drawing too, or to the to the photo too. So you don't want that. So just leave unsharp mask. If that's on, turn it off and always check for that. Now. We've, uh, we're going to go ahead and manually, we're going to do what's called, you can see here, it's a histogram adjustment. A histogram, all it is, is a graph of all the pixels in your picture. All these pixels that are here are now on this graph. And uh, the very brightest pixels are these pixels back here in this background or on the collar. Those are the bright pixels that are right there. And you'll notice that, but this is, it's not all the way full scale. This, this is 255. This is white bright. This is, this is the brightest you can be, 255. What's happened is this drawing has collapsed. I mean, not drawing. This photo has collapsed as far as the information that it has. It's shrunk. It's faded from the brights, and it's also faded from the darks. So this is what we're going to be doing to help repair that in the scan. So one of the things you want to do is, again, 245 and 10, these, these adjustments are, this is like training wheels, uh, automatic, artif what you call it, artificial intelligence provided by the program. We don't want it because I'm telling you how to do without it. It's to guard against blowing out your drawing as far as burning out the whites or going, you know, going, taking the black. Um, if you go too far, you get patches of white without any detail in it, or black without any detail in it. You don't want to do that in your drawing. And this helps you not do that, but it's, it's a training wheel type of approach. And we're going we're gonna to do this a different way. So what we want to do is we want to take this slider here, and this is the place where 255 is, and we're going to slide that in so that the pixels are getting brighter and brighter and brighter to the point where, okay, where the brightest pixels in the picture are now expanded up to 255. This, the dark pixels at zero, we're pushing this in. The dark pixels are going darker, darker, darker until now they go to almost or right to zero. And we're just right out at the end of the, so from here, these this white here, the brights here, that's uh, here in on the graph and the histogram, and the darks are down in this area. So what you see here is 
in your image there's a lot more I mean the it's uh, the contrast has really been brought back and what we're going to do is we're going to actually scan like this and what you've also doing it this way you keep the sepia tone and we're going to close this and we're going to scan with these settings and okay we <clears throat> make sure we we set up the folder that we scan to and put our put the name of the file as far as what type of uh, you can either choose bitmap JPEG number of different selections here JPEG is lossy you don't want to lose you don't want to lose information at this step this is you're, you're making uh, your digital copy you do not want to use lose any information so probably you know you can bitmap um, that is lossless but we're gonna I'm gonna choose TIFF here that's a, that's a standard and the options you just check Windows for this is a Windows machine so and we as scanned and this time if you look at the properties you're going to see that uh, we've got 280 uh, 28 12 by 32 48 what this allows you to do is if you wanted to not recommend it because it's going to be soft you could blow this up to a 10 inch you know 8 by 10 um, even though it would be soft you'd have enough pixels to do it now the other just my other justification for scanning at the 1200 dpi is it just when I use my digital camera um, my um, image is it's something by 3000 pixels so what I'm doing is putting this into the same ballpark so 1200 TPAG gets me there 48 bit color depth which will be se selected in the original in the in the that's the professional level of scanning it gives you color, bit depth is like resolution you've got horizontal number of pixels which is this you've got vertical number of pixels which is that bit depth is like Imagine if it's into the into the drawing that uh, it's the uh, the amount of information each pixel has. If you have 24 bits, you have 24 bits of information. If you have 48 bits, you have twice as much information per pixel, and it, it uh, gives you when you do manipulations to the drawing after the fact. It's it's good to have that that level of information. This is the photograph. Now you can see where it's sepia tone still, but uh, the brights are full level, the darks, and you can see his face now where it was very faded before. So this is the way to do it with sepia tone. Now we're going to go back and do it in a manner that gets rid of the sepia tone. What we're going, we've reset the drawing. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to use it. We're going to also we're going to do a histogram adjustment. But they, we're going to do a histogram adjustment. This is last time we did it as a composite of the red, green, and blue values. Instead of doing it as a composite of all the values together, we're going to do a channel by color channel, in each color channel individually. First, let's go ahead and get rid of this training wheel stuff here. Now, we're going to go to the red channel. So, we're going to go ahead and boost the red values of each pixel until it's full scale. Okay, and full scale here. I think we're re-expanding the channel. And here we're re-expanding the green channel now. See it's changing color over here. And we're re-expanding the blue channel. See how they've all just see. Well, not only did we get a fade, but we had a colored shift. And now, lo and behold, when you look at it, it's almost black and white again. We've gone ahead and uh, we've uh, we've almost restored the black and white appearance of the photo. And I think that we get a better result this way. Although some people will want to keep the sepia tone, I would like better, more accuracy. So I think I've got it with this.